Hey y'all, so a week ago I had my breast reduction surgery and I am now one week post-op and feeling a lot better. And I wanted to come on here and share the top 10 things that I've been using that have been a game changer for my recovery. Just a few little stats. I had a breast reduction, a breast lift, and lipo of the side boob. I also had a combination of an epidural and um, IV anesthesia so I know some people have had anesthesia and then had a tube down their throat so I did not have that whatsoever so a lot of the suggestions that I'm going to have are based on what my surgery entailed and the care that I needed afterwards. This is not professional medical advice this is me sharing what I use for myself and what worked for me. Obviously if you have medical questions contact your doctor contact a medical professional but if you want to know just tips that may help ease your recovery at home stay tuned. Okay so let's get into this. The first thing that I had was the surgical bra. This is the actual surgical bra that they sent me home in and as you can see it's not like cute or anything but um it's made by EMS Surgical LP. This is style 958 and it's an extra large. You can see that this bra is dingy. It has been beat up a little bit. At first I was thinking that I wanted to get dark colored bras. I kept thinking, oh, I'm going to want something that's black. Don't do it. Get a white bra. Get something that is Velcro. And the reason that I say this is because your movement is going to be limited. And having a Velcro bra makes it super easy to take it on and off. And having something white allows you to track the bleeding. So I would have never thought of that before. But you can see these are actual marks where Mike and I were tracking how much blood there was. And this is just something that you're going to need to wear. So... It's not going to be cute. You need it for function, but I saw a lot that were zip or eye hook. Right now, a week post-op, I can wear the zipper ones while I'm washing this one, but I already ordered a few more online. Velcro here, Velcro in the chest. It's so much easier when you're having to check your wounds. Get Velcro, get white so that you can track it. Okay, for that's the first thing. Um, Second thing... Compression socks. I never even thought about these, but my husband, I'm lucky he used to be an ICU nurse and he told me that I should get compression socks. This just helps to minimize your risk of having any blood clots. You're not going to be able to move as much. I would say within a couple days, I was able to start walking around and it's actually required and recommended that you move around and do light walking. But I bought some cute compression socks. I got these on Amazon. It came in a pack of 10. So compression socks. You're also going to be sleeping on your back for six weeks. So I bought a wedge. <laughs> this is kind of throwing off the light, but I bought a wedge. You can see it here. And this has been great for me at night sleeping. I have a ton of other pillows on my bed. The wedge was good because of the short turnaround time I needed for delivery. This is like a seven and a half inch one. I would recommend getting the 12 inch wedge. I also just said fuck it and bought a whole wedge sleep system that I'm going to be switching over to. It needed 48 hours to expand, but you have to sleep on your back for six weeks. I'm a side sleeper. I'm a stomach sleeper. So just spend the money and invest in really a comfortable setup. A week into recovery, I still need help getting out of bed. You want to fight the urge to use your hands to press up on your, to like carry your weight and press up. So Mike is still coming over and helping me, but um, sleeping on a wedge has been great. I cannot sleep fully flat yet. It's just too much strain for me to get up. So that is the third thing. Something else that was recommended for me to get, which I had already, but an airline like a neck pillow that you use for flying so obviously it's COVID I haven't been going anywhere um but a friend of a friend <laughs> recommended this and this has been great when you're sleeping elevated this just makes it easier to keep your head up it did for the first few days kind of feel like I was on a never-ending flight somewhere but it helped to have my neck elevated and to still be able to kind of nod off and go this way. So I would say grab your neck pillow. A lot of people have these from when they travel. So this may be something that you have that you didn't think about using, but you will want to have this. 
something else. You are going to be living in button tops. You can see I am still wearing button pajamas. Um, after a while, I was tired of having ugly ass sweats on, to be honest, and I just wanted to feel a little cuter and not look dingy. So having pajama sets, this is from Target, really affordable, but ones that button up. So this is something that I could easily take on and off for if I need to look at my dressings and change anything or if I'm getting in and out of my bra. Also, you're going to be limiting how much you raise your hands above your head. You're basically going to be a baby T-Rex for six weeks. You're not lifting your arms over your shoulders and you're not lifting anything heavier than 10 pounds. So having a button up top or even a zip up top is going to be great and having something that's cute will make you feel better so i have these like little coordinated sets it can get warm at night so i have shorts um but this is something that i would suggest everyone to have because you're going to hit a point in your recovery where you just want to feel cute and look a little cuter um before you get to that point where you want to look cute you're going to need a hoodie I suggest getting just whatever hoodies you have. If you wanna make it a coordinated set, go for it. These were the initial things that I lived in the first couple of days after surgery. And literally just a hoodie that I had that was zip up, but had a hood and was warm. Sometimes you're, you can be cold coming out of surgery, you're gonna be colder. So this was a hoodie I had. I have like, I think maybe one or two other ones that I've just rotated through and Mike would wash them. But this was what I lived in first, and then I switched over to the cute sets. So definitely have something cute that zips or buttons up, but then have something that will keep you warm and that is just whatever, it can get some blood on it because you will probably bleed. Next, you are going to bleed. <laughs> so you're gonna wanna go ahead and get these pads. The hospital, or like the doctor's office sent us home with some, but we quickly ran out and they were not things that we could just find at Walgreens or CVS or whatever. So um, we were able to get these off of Amazon and they're just these surgical dressings, five by nine, and you're gonna end up using these under your bra and you're gonna pad the incisions. So my incisions are all taped up from my doctor, but then this was what I used that was able to get any blood. You shouldn't need these past a week um, I'm not actively bleeding anymore, but I still have them on because it actually is a cushion and it just feels nice. So these are things that I would say pre-order. You will probably be sent home with some, but not enough. And when you need them, you want to have them already ready to go. So these ones, and you want them large enough. The ones that we got at the store were super small and then it wasn't good. So go ahead and just in advance, get the larger ones that cover a larger breast area. Um, something that you should be told when you have your um, pre-op or your consultation is going to be around constipation. A lot of people experience constipation as a side effect from anesthesia and pain meds. I was on pain meds until day five, so they recommended that the day I came home from surgery, I start a stool softener. So this is that Ducalax. I started this. Um, I also was taking Metamucil, which I'm still taking this sometimes. And in case I did not poop and was still constipated, Mike got a suppository. I feel like my body knew that this was gonna be coming up next if I had not had a BM, because I think it was like two days after surgery and I still hadn't pooped yet. And Mike is like, if you don't go, we're gonna have to use this. And I and my body just was starting to like produce some stuff. So. Um, constipation is normal you need to stay extra hydrated and you need to at least be using a stool softener and fiber so um i would say this is a mandatory start this they will recommend this this is an additional thing these two worked well together and um worst case scenario you may need to actually have a suppository so if you already have this ready to go you can just treat what you need Next up, okay, so I was not able to pee on my own. This was something that I needed help for the first few days to pee. I needed help to kind of wipe a little bit. And the first 48 hours, I wasn't able to take a shower. Um, 
I think I didn't take a shower till like day three or four and I was showering with the shower head behind me. Anyway, what helped me feel fresher in between um, not being able to take a shower is just having wet wipes and using these whenever I use the bathroom. And it's something that may not seem like it comes front of mind when you are going to be preparing for your surgery and your recovery, but having wet wipes will make you feel fresher in between your showers. Mike and I still did like a little hoe bath or whatever, but this by far made me feel fresher, being able to use this in my body after I use the bathroom, even being able to just hit up my armpits, game changer. And, um, the last thing that I use that I think is something everyone should get, and excuse it, has a little blood still on it because I have not washed this yet, but this is a mastectomy pillow. And so this was recommended to me by a friend of a friend who had breast reduction surgery. I ended up loving this and I just have recently stopped using it as much. So what you do is it has, um, it has a strap and like a hook on this side and you end up wrapping it around yourself. And initially I used this on the car ride home from the hospital and the seatbelt was able to come across me like this and add that extra cushion. Um, it also, as I was walking around the house, gave my arms a place to rest and it just felt nice. And it gave a little bit of a cushion. So wherever I was walking, there was just a cushion between me and whatever. Um, those first few days when my breasts were very sensitive. Also, what I really loved about it is it had a pocket and it's double sided so you can use either side. But I liked having a pocket where I would keep my cell phone in here. I would keep my AirPods hooked onto here. Um, when I was laying in bed, sometimes I'd keep a remote in here. And it just felt nice to move around the house and have everything accessible right here where I'm not having to reach down or reach up. So this is something that um, I did not think about that a friend suggested that I ended up really loving. Um, I'm going to continue to use this when I'm in the car so that I have a little bit of a cushion for the seatbelt. But yeah, these are the things that I've used that have been a game changer. If you have any of the things on this list that you've enjoyed, let me know in the comments. If you have other suggestions for things that I did not mention that were helpful for you in your surgery and your recovery, let me know. Getting this surgery is life changing and it's something that I encourage everyone to seriously consider. I'm gonna do another video that actually talks about my consultation, my pre-op, how insurance approved it, all that. But yeah, I got my surgery last week and I'm finally feeling better and wanted to hop on here and share some things. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them below.